Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, YouTubers, wherever you are on planet Earth. This video is called Memory Lane. Now, my Graham created these two files, and I'm so glad he did. Um, and I'm going to go through them a bit. The, these are our archives, our family archives. Um, from when I was on the run. I've just got to get the right one. Because oh, he's kind of put him in some sort of order. But before I do, back in 1997, and I this, you know, weird shit happens to me. I do not know why. I have no explanation. I think this is, apart from the beach and poltergeist, this is probably one of the weirdest things that ever happened. And I want your opinion on this. Is this me or not? I'm not sure. I think it is me. I think it is me. I was walking along the street uh, near the top of George Street. Um, it was just opposite. I can't remember the name of the road. Um, there's like Blatchington Road. I was on the other side of, of Blatchington Road to George Street. And I was with my friend Thomas. And I was on my phone and all of a sudden he said, did you see that man just took a picture of you? And I looked round and I couldn't see anybody and I said, no. He said, yes, there's a man and he said he was really weird and he just took a photograph of you. Anyway, it sort of stuck in my mind because, you know, we had company from the old bill in those days. So I wondered who it might have been, but he said, you get an instinct if it's a copper. He said, it's not a copper. It's not a copper. Anyway. So that was 1997, and years and years later, um, I think this is, I can't see what date it, this was uh, created, it would have been about 2006, or maybe 2007, <laughs> you know, so 10 years later, um, somebody on the internet, and I can't remember exactly where we found this, but someone came on one of our old YouTube channels and commented and said, I took a picture of you, Fiona, in 1997. Is that me? I think it is. I, I'll just hold it up. The nose doesn't quite look right, but that is how I had my hair. I was where I did have clothes and a phone like that. I, I think it is me. <laughs> Who took that picture? I do not know. But how random. Anyway, so, yeah, let's, let's go through the file. Memory Lane. Now, I was watching Sean Atwood this morning. I love Sean Atwood's channel. And he was talking to Matthew uh, Steeples. Now, I'll see if I can find this uh, particular newspaper article. Anyway, they were talking a lot about the Madeleine McCann case. Now, I have mentioned this before on Graham's channel. But we used to live in Prayer Deluge years before Madeline was taken, years and years before, and I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it one bit. It completely creeped me out. Oh, here's, here's a picture. Um, oh, actually, there's another one. I saw it earlier. Has it gone? Yeah, oh, here we go. Um... You don't know if you guys remember the Daily Mail when I was arrested in Spain. They said I was bloated and dishevelled. And I always protested at that because, yes, I've always been dishevelled, but bloated, well, <laughs> apart from recent times, um, that was me at the time that the Daily Mail said I was bloated and dishevelled. If only I had a figure like that now. It's amazing. Graham has kept literally... Everything, everything. I've got to be careful. Some of the pictures I show you on here, actually, they're a bit risque. And I've even got pictures of Lolly. Remember Lolly and the Sack of Diamonds? I've got pictures of all of them here. It's amazing. I'm looking particularly, yeah, Prayer Deluge absolutely creeped me out. Something chronic. I don't know what that photograph's all about. Um, when we first turned up there, we went into a bar... Uh, I won't say the name because I don't know if the lady's still alive or not, but let's say it was called Sarah's Bar. And as soon as we went in, our Sammy, well, I'll show you a picture of her with her blonde, 
golden blonde locks in a minute. I'll see if I can find one. She's mostly bald in these because, uh, <coughs> well, there's one. Graham literally kept everything. That's us. That's me and Sammy. Oops. <laughs> On a beach in Portugal. Very close to Prairie de Luge. Um, yeah, we were living on a campsite uh, uh, there and Graham kept going away on business and stuff and it really gave me the creeps. I hated it. Absolutely hated it. In fact, it was towards the end of my time on the run and I hated it so much that in the end I flew back to England and I said I'd rather go to prison than stay in prayer delusion. It really does creep me out. Now, this is years ago. This is 2002. So no detriment to anybody who lives in prayer delusion now. Um, I, it just, I also, I had a terrible dream before we even arrived in Prayer Delusion. That was another weird thing that apparently came true um, years after we left. But yeah, we went into this, say, Sarah's bar and she had one of those old-fashioned Instamatic cameras and she took a picture of me, Graham, and our little blonde Sammy and she said, oh, I'm going to put that with my collection on the wall and she had a cork board in the bar and she put it on this board with all these other pictures of other unsuspecting families who all had blonde children. And I didn't like that at all. I didn't feel comfortable. Number one, I was on the run. It was the last fucking thing I wanted. But, and that's what Graham attributed it to all the time. He said, it's because you're on the run that you're feeling stressed. And I said to him, no, it's not, it's not. And there were a couple of occasions with what they, they're called the GNR, Portuguese police. And on one of the occasions, um, little Sammy was in a we had this sort of a, a big blue bowl um, and we'd make like a bubble bath and she'd play in that all day long outside the caravan and I was watching her through the window at the sink <coughs> GNR police car well I, I assume it was unless they were in disguise and they were something else and I'm not putting anything past anything this what it appeared to me two GNR police officers pulled up in this marked police car and the one in the passenger side um, was looking around to see if anybody was watching. He opened the car door. He got one leg out. He was going to reach out for our Sammy. And uh, I jumped out of the caravan and said, what are you doing? Anyway, he pulled his leg in, slammed the door, and the driver drove off really fast. So I don't know what happened to Madeline. Make what you will of that. In the end, it just drove me crazy, the town. I... Um, I went to the supermarket. I used to go to the hairdressers in Lagos and uh, the supermarket. And these people, everybody was staring at me. Everybody, and like laughing at me. I thought, oh, I've got something on my face. What's, what's going on? Anyway, I went to our local post box. This was apparently the 19th of October, 2002. And I pulled out a copy of the Portugal News. Now that's, of course, all back to front for you guys but it says have you seen this woman and there's me all over the front page in the Portugal news this one was taken in Brighton police station this is a still from a camera um, when you have a private conversation with your lawyer uh, it's private <laughs> police can't listen in they can't record video or audio that's all a big no-no and this was in the ID suite and I went into this interview room with my lawyer and she straight away said there's a camera in the corner of the room what's going on with that and the uniformed inspector who was in charge of the ID suite assured us that the camera was broken it was not working as soon as he shut the door she said to me I don't believe him we've got to assume that that camera is uh, working and so it was. <laughs> and not only is that a still, and they use that a lot, they were not only recording video, but they were recording audio because they gave it to ITV, put it on the TV, and I saw it, and I guess my lawyer saw it as well. So how's that for a big no-no? And then this picture here was taken in Brighton by the Argus. And this picture here... I hate this picture. I was actually 29 years old when that was taken. Can you see that? What a baby face I had. 29. I wanted a passport 
and I think, yeah, no, I might have been 26 there. It could have been 1996 or 97, around <coughs> right about the time that other fella took a picture of me. And that's what I looked like, that's what I used to look like when I woke up first thing in the morning. I, I looked like I was about 12 years old, don't I? I mean, look at that, I look like Shirley Bloody Dimple. Anyway, the day before, I'd done my hair, my makeup, I looked really good, went and got a picture taken for my passport, but apparently the curtain colour was the wrong in the background. They wrote to me and said, no, that's no good, rejected it, so I just sort of sod it, got up, no makeup, went and got the picture taken and had to live with that photograph for many years on my passport ever since. So, you ever get a passport photo done, make the effort. My passport photos are always absolutely grim. But yeah, I'll show, I'll show you, uh, I might have a picture of Sammy in that blue bowl but what do you make of that I mean what what were they doing what were they thinking why were they why were they reaching out for her um you see I've got to be very careful which photographs I show here oh I've got everything in here I've even got letters from the Daily Mail um <laughs> saying sorry about a few things and uh, what's this one? Oh, here we are this is quite an interesting one. My arresting officer, Steve Skerritt. Again, this will be back to front, but I can take a picture of that and put that on my community post so you can all see. See that detective is under suspicion. That's all about Steve Skerritt's arrest. You can see that's the Argus. Now he made a big hoo ha, and they put me all over the papers. And all he got was a little, a little thing. And they've deleted that off their online archives. I can't find it. Amazing, isn't it? He was arrested, thrown out of the force on suspicion of perverting the course of justice. Um, whereas me, I was splashed all over the place. Oh, here's Far Ben. When we first bought her, that was our previous boat. See that? All work that needed doing to that. And I've got a, a, another one of her actually um, all fixed up. It's amazing. I love having these sort of photograph albums. Oh, yeah, this was uh, the, the Sunday Mirror. Now, the Sunday Mirror wanted to do an interview with me, and I didn't want to do an interview with them. So Graham went to go meet them. Them and I uh, can't remember uh, if it was The Observer or not. Anyway, he definitely went to go meet the, uh, the Sunday Mirror. And he took some pictures of me and they said, photos taken by me will not be used until such time as an agreement is finalised between myself, Graham and Fiona uh, G. Hodgson, signed on the 9th of September 2004. And this is the photograph Graham gave them. That was a picture of me taken in a friend's flat while we were on the run. And um, that was Graham's photograph. And talk about copyright infringement. And being a left-wing newspaper, and of course my mother being a right-wing Tory, they went ahead and used it and didn't pay a penny. Isn't that incredible? We've got you. Good God. And I, oh, I've got the other article here. They actually went with the colour version. Um, let's have a look. Revealed caravan hideout of fugitive dubbed the cat. Well... And again, it's backwards. Caravan hideout. Yeah? Did, does Far Ben look like a caravan to you? I think they might have said that, actually, in order to protect um, Sammy and Ben. And then um, there's all these bizarre ones. There's a, a huge one in the Daily Mail there. And for the life of me, I don't. I, I mean, I was looking around for cameras at that moment, and I couldn't see any. But that was actually, that was the day I went to the pub for my shift, and I didn't know I'd been on the front page of the Argus like a challenge. I had no idea, and that was when I met that horrible, that horrible psycho boyfriend I'd had when I was fifteen. Locked up. Yeah, I wonder who took that picture. Oh, oh this one's it's such a shame. All the things are backwards. Um, the Argus were very nice and used quite a nice picture of me and it says the cat is back and pulling pints in pub that was not the headline that um, 
made the pub fill up. Oh, this is the bloated and dishevelled. Yeah, that was on the other side. You can see there, that's where they're saying I'm bloated and dishevelled. Um, but it was a bad camera angle. <laughs> is there such a thing as a good camera angle when you're being nicked in Spain, being carted off to Spanish jail for some shit you didn't fucking do? Uh, I won't face the rap, says the cat. Oh, it goes on and on and on. It's another Daily Mail one. Um, it is interesting going through all these old things. I mean, I've found things this morning. I've got There's letters from the Mirror here, letters from the Daily Mail, Press Complaints Authority. Good grief. There's even a photocopy of the cheque that the Daily Mail ultimately paid us. Well, paid Graham. Um, let me have a look. See if I can find that. I saw it. So these are all the letters of complaint back and forth between us and the Daily Mail. Oh, here's the here's the picture. I would, maybe I shouldn't show a check because it'll have account numbers on it. I can hide them or something. And they're all back to front. There you go. Daily Mail. Uh, I think you can see Graham's name there. Okay. They they um they did put it all right eventually. I don't know if I've gone past the negatives. Because the, the big thing was, there was a bone of contention. Oh yeah, I've got a picture of Far Ben. Finished here. Uh, so you can see a comparison. I was very proud of, of all my work on Far Ben. That's what she ended up looking like in the end, by the time I'd finished with her. And there's another one on the other side when we took her out of the water just before we sold her. So, yeah, let's see if I can find the negatives, because there was always a really weird thing in my story. This photograph of me turned up in the newspapers. And I said to Graham, that's one of your photographs. What the hell is that doing in the newspaper? Let's see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, this one is it. It's not that... Clear, but you can see I'm in an Irving sheepskin there. Now that photograph was one of a series and that was taken in our hideout in Holland where obviously no one fucking knew where we were. We weren't receiving visitors generally speaking and um, it turned up in the Daily Mail. Mystery, how it got there. Um, so we sued the Daily Mail. We said where the hell did you get that picture from and they said oh, we don't have to tell you anything. And we said, very much begged to differ. <coughs> you do. And they said, prove that it is your photograph, Graham. And we did. And I know, I know we've got the negatives in here. Ah, here they are. These are the negatives of the series of photos. Let me see if I can find the particular one that they used. Uh, ah, yeah, it's that one. Now, if I hold a piece... Oh, here we go. There's the photograph. It's one of a series. And I can actually do better than that because Graham got the negatives developed. And here they are. There, you can see clearly, that's the photograph, and it's one of a series. But the person who stole it out of our caravan, they didn't know it was one of a series. They thought, because I was wearing an Irving flying jacket, that it had been taken at Shoreham Airport. Uh -uh. They were very much mistaken. Here it is again. And there's actually a warning on this photograph now with the Daily Mail. There it is again. Um, that they're not only not allowed to use it, but anyone who wants to use it has to ask permission from the top dogs at the Daily Mail to even approach Graham to ask him for permission to use it. That's So the Daily Mail did the right thing in the end and they coughed up and they did concede. What we did was we actually made a little video on one of those old video cassettes and... Um, I held the negative up with a piece of paper behind it and I, I sent that video to Mr. Dacre and I said, Mr. Dacre, this is one of a series. How did 
one of these photographs go <laughs> into your newspaper and Paul Dacre hit the fucking roof and he said find out what the hell's going on with this and it was sort of under his orders and a fella called Nick Jennings they said get that off and they've never used it since I mean actually I don't mind when you're younger you, you worry so much about what you look like don't you <laughs> I don't know why I mean look at that look at that look at that I'm actually I'm really I'm really quite proud of that <laughs> if only I'd scare everyone to death these days if I did that <laughs> but, uh, yeah. so yeah that was weird that's really weird I'll show you that picture again that the person took of me look at that is that me guys is it because this fella who sent us the the um, link to the photograph and I can't remember which website it was on but it had loads of hits as well and it was it was tagged as me it was tagged as Fiona Mont Britain's Post Wanted nothing it even had the date that it had been taken but we'd forgotten that so this one's going to be a little bit of a longer one <laughs> pictures that the the kids have drawn of me and Graham <laughs> oh loads of stuff from the days of the uh flying club such a long time ago oh yeah there was something else that I found in here I think it sort of did get under my skin a little bit the um, troll the other day saying you just make shit up I don't make anything up I don't make it why I've never understood bullshitters because it's one surefire way to make yourself look like a complete twat is just make shit up um, and I'm so glad Graham documented literally everything Oh, what's this? Oh, 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 yes, that's a story for another day. Ah, let's have a look. This is from when I sold my flat. And I had to pay, out of the sale of my flat, £8,337.93 for a car which I owned for three days. And that is another story. I'll just show you that. Can you see that? That is the rundown of the sale of my flat. £8,337 and 93p for a car I had for three days. Of course, YouTube didn't exist back in those days, and I dare say that the gentleman who arranged for that horror story had no idea I'd be sitting on the internet. Maybe he shouldn't have behaved like such a twat, thinking nobody was looking, because people are going to look now. Um, now. Yes, I was looking specifically. Oh, yeah, look at this. It's a bit, I don't know, YouTube probably demonetised me for this, but this is actually...